The Challenge of the Yukon. <laughs> it's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King! On you, Husky! <laughs> gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush with Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Sergeant Preston entered the Northwest Mounted Police Headquarters in Dawson with the great dog, Yukon King, at his side. Oh, good morning, Sergeant. Hi there, King. Morning, Jim. <laughs> I understand the inspector wants to see me. Well, that's right, Sergeant. He knew you got back in town last night from 40 Mile. He told me this morning to send for you. He's waiting in his office now. Oh, I'll go right in. Stay here, King. <laughs> Come on, King. Come on. Come in. Morning, Inspector. I just received your message. Hey, good morning, Sergeant Preston. Sit down. Thank you, sir. Sergeant, how soon will you be able to leave for Selkirk? Within the hour, sir. Good. I've just received a telegraph report. That there have been three robberies and a murder down there within the past ten days. None of them has been solved, and the constable has no clues. I see. I want you to go down there at once. Now, Constable Higgins is a good man, and clever people must be operating there to pull the wool over his eyes. Jack Higgins is a good man, sir. And if he's calling for help, it's mighty unusual. I agree. I think you can make the trip on horseback before the snow flies, Sergeant, if you start immediately. That's right, sir. I'll leave it in the hour and take King with me. I'm counting on you to break those cases, Sergeant. I have a feeling that they've all been the work of the same person or persons. I'll do my best, sir. I'm sure you will. Good luck and goodbye, Sergeant. Bye, sir. After making the long and tedious trip from Dawson to Selkirk in record time, Sergeant Preston and King arrived at their destination and went directly to the constable's office. The constable immediately started a discussion of the cases on which he needed help. I tell you, Sergeant, it's a mystery to me the way those jobs have been pulled without leaving any clues. I've really done my best. So far, I've been up against a blank wall. I understand there was a murder. That's right. Mrs. Mears has been raising hob with me because the victim was her star boarder. And he was murdered in her rooming house. You mean Hazel Mears? Yes. She was at the opera house with friends the night it happened. The victim was Hank Collins. An old sourdough who struck it rich and sold out his claim for plenty of cash. I remember, Hank. A friend of his went to see him that night. The light in the room was burning and the door was locked. Hank didn't answer his knock. Then what? While he stood outside the door in the hall, he heard a shot in Hank's room. Some men rushed up from downstairs and they broke in the door. Found Hank dead. There was no gun, no clues. What about Hank's cash? Stolen. What's more, the door and the two windows were locked on the inside. I've been stumped. Well, that's enough to stump anybody. What about the other robberies? Before Hank was robbed and murdered, there were two other robberies. The first took place in the bank at noon. It just happened that Mrs. Mears was in the banker's private office at the time. And the other one, Jack? Second robbery was at the express office at night. The safe was broken into and a couple of thousand dollars taken. Then came Hank's murder. Well, how do you know a robbery was the motive for Hank's murder? Well, he was known to have taken a large sum of cash out of the bank that afternoon. Oh, Intended to ride to Elk Landing the next day to buy a trading post there. Hank thought he'd like running a store. And there were no clues at all, eh? None I could find, Sergeant. I've made out complete reports on the robberies and the murder. Here they are. Good. I'll read them tonight. And King and I will see what we can turn up in the morning. Meantime, Hazel Mears looked at the clock on the desk in her upstairs sitting room in the boarding house she owned. Mm. After five o'clock. The bank closes at five on the dot, so now I'll take that cash box to Jim Drake's office. <laughs> Getting her hat and coat, Hazel took a tin cash box from the desk and left the house. A short time later, she entered the office of the mining company. Well, Mrs. Mears, this is a pleasure. How are you, Mr. Drake? Fine, just fine. Is there something I may do for you? Won't you sit down, please? Thank you. As a matter of fact, there is. Yes. <laughs> you know, I don't know what's the trouble with me lately, but I just don't seem to remember to attend to certain things. <laughs> Perhaps it 
stage creeping up on me. What do you think, Mr. Drake? Oh, no, no, nothing like that, Mrs. Mears. You, uh, well, you carry your age very well. Mm -hmm. uh, what I meant to say is you, you seem quite young. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's what I really meant. Oh, how nice of you to say that, Mr. Drake. A woman likes to receive compliments from handsome men, and of course, I'm no exception. I, I, I've never been called well, handsome before. It's nice to hear you say that, even if it isn't true. Why, Mr. Drake, of course it's true. Oh, no. Why, just the other day, I heard one of the women in town refer to you as the handsome and keen-minded businessman, Jim Drake. Really? Well, I'm glad I make a good impression around town. Oh, you do, Mr. Drake. By the way, here I am forgetting again. Oh. <laughs> I forgot for a few moments why I came in here to see you. Uh, oh, yes, yes. Oh, uh, what is it you wanted, Mrs. Mears? Oh, I really hate to bother you, but, well, this cash box contains a fairly large sum of rent money. I meant to get it to the bank before it closed for the day, but... When I thought of it, the bank was already closed. I see. I'm sure you'll agree it isn't too safe to have cash lying around in a rooming house. Mm. One never knows who might find out and, and try to steal it. Oh, of course, that's very true. I brought it in to you, hoping you wouldn't mind keeping it overnight in your company, say. Uh, of course, if it's asking too much. Oh, I'll... not at all, Mrs. Mears, not at all. <sighs> I'll be glad to keep it in the safe for you. Oh, thank you so much. Here's the cash box. Yes, I'll put it in the safe right now. There. It's safe and sound until you call for it in the morning. Oh, it's such a relief to me. Well, thank you again, Mr. Drake. That's all right. I'll come for the cash box tomorrow to take it to the bank. Goodbye for now. Goodbye. That evening, Hazel Mears sat at a desk in her upstairs sitting room. She was in earnest conversation with two of her boarders, Rocky Lewis, a gambler at the cafe, and Dirk Miles, a tough-looking man who did part-time carpenter work around town. Hazel was saying, Well, boys, we have a good setup, and nobody suspects that we're involved in what's happened. Yeah, Hazel, we sure have. <laughs> oh, that constable's puzzled about everything. <laughs> He's been running around like a chicken with its head cut off, looking for clues. Yes. <laughs> After I plugged the old sourdough and grabbed his cash, the constable went over the room with a fine-tooth comb. <laughs> he couldn't figure out how anyone got in there and out again when the window was locked and the door was bolted on the inside. Yeah. The other three members of our gang take the loot out to their hideout at the trapper shack. That keeps us in the clear, even if someone did suspect and investigate around here. The job for tonight is all set like you planned it, Hazel. Uh, where are the boys? They'll meet us behind the mining office. Nine. It's almost nine o'clock now. Here, I wrote down the safe combination on this slip of paper. What? You're a wonder, Hazel. How did you get it? <laughs> Easy, Rocky. I waited until the bank was closed. Then I locked my tin cash box, which was stuffed with paper, and went into the mining office. I asked Jim Drake to keep it in his safe until the bank opens in the mornings, and it was rent collections. <laughs> it gives me a laugh, the way you have the important men in town thinking you're so kind and friendly. <laughs> it comes in handy, Rocky. Mr. Drake said he'd be glad to keep the cash box for me. And while he opened the safe to put it in there, I watched close and got the combination. That's all there was to it. <laughs> well, get going to meet the others. I'll go out to the shack tomorrow to divvy up the take. All right. Dirk and I'll stop the cafe a while. After the job's done, of course. Yeah, and all of you wear the masks I made for you, just in case. Now, are you sure you can get in, Dirk? That back door is thick and the bolts on the inside are heavy. Sure. <laughs> when I built that petition in Drake's office last week, I waited till he went to dinner. And then I put real short screws in place of the long ones in the iron band that holds the bolt. The least bit of pushing will rip them out and the door will open. You being a handyman around town is a big help, Dirk. Well, thanks. Now get going to meet the boys. Go on, Dirk. Dirk and Rocky left Hazel's house and, keeping to the shadows, went to the back of the mining company office. 
where the other three men of the gang were waiting. All right, now get your masks on, boys. He's yeah, got boys. the combination of the safe for us, so the job will be simple. Come on. All we have to do is give a good shove against the back door of the office. I got it fixed so it'll bust open easy. Let's go. Hmm? All right, now all together, let's shove against the door. Hey, doesn't seem to be given, Duck. Are you sure? Yeah, you're... yeah, yeah. Keep shoving. Come on. Hey, did it. Now, a couple of the actors' lookouts. Now we'll go open the safe and clean it out, including Hazel's tin cash box. Come on. Got the paper with the combination on it? Yeah. Here it is. Light a match, huh? All right. All right. Now, here goes. Left 21. Right 10. Left 13. Yeah, that was easy. Now, Rocky, help me get the stuff out of there. We'll get it away from here in a hurry. Come on, get busy. It looks like we really struck it rich here, too. Yeah. Yeah. Now I'll close and lock the safe again. When Drake comes in tomorrow morning, he's sure going to get a big shock when he opens that safe. Yeah. <laughs> and he's sure going to be puzzled, wondering how everything disappeared from the safe when it was locked. Now, let's get out of here. Now. Clear out here, fellas. All set, Jake. We'll separate now. I'll take the loot out to the shack. The rest of you go into the cafe one at a time so as not to attract attention. I'll meet you all there later. Gotcha. The following morning, Sergeant Preston and King were about to leave the constable's office when the mining company manager, Jim Drake, hurriedly entered. Well, Jim Drake, how are you? Fine, Sergeant Fine. I'm glad to find you here. Very glad. Something wrong? Someone broke into the mining office during the night and robbed the safe. They blow the safe? No, no, that's what I can't understand. I noticed the back door had been forced open. The safe was closed and locked. But when I opened it, it was cleaned out. There was about $5,000 in paper bills stolen along with a tin cash box I was keeping for Hazel Mears. I see. Who else has the safe combination? Well, the owner of the company, but he's in Dawson City. We'll go over with you and investigate. Maybe King can pick up a trail, Sergeant. That's what I'm hoping, Constable. Let's go. Come along, King. <laughs> At the mining office, the two Mounties looked around carefully. Then they stepped outside the back door and scrutinized the ground. Finally, Sergeant Preston spoke to Mr. Drake. Many people use this back door, Jim? Uh, yes, Sergeant. The men who work in the mine use it when they have occasion to come to the office. I see. I noticed all the footprints, but there's no way of knowing which would be those of the crooks. This is the way it's been with the other job, Sergeant. Either by accident or otherwise, the possible clues seem to be covered. Huh? Wonder if this could be the work of the same persons who pulled those other jobs. You mean you think the same crooks are responsible for the other two robberies and the murder? I have no definite reason for thinking so, Jack. But the fact that they leave no clues and operate so cleverly gives the same pattern to all of them. Let's go back inside. All right. You spoke of a tin cash box you were keeping for Hazel Mears, Mr. Drake. Yes, that's right. She was too late to get it to the bank, so she came here and asked me to put it in my safe. She said it contained rent money. Does she know about the robbery yet? Oh, not yet. We'll stop by and tell her. I want to find out just how much was in that box. Come on, Jack. We'll go over to Hazel's place now. All right. Let's go, King. <laughs> A short time later, the two Mounties knocked on the door of Hazel's boarding house. <laughs> oh, Sergeant Preston and the constable. I didn't know you were in town, Sergeant. I arrived last night, Hazel. The constable and I brought you some bad news. Oh, bad news? Oh, do come on inside. Thanks. You come in too, King. <laughs> Go right into the park. Oh, thank you. Now, what's the bad news you brought, Sergeant? The mining company's safe was robbed during the night. Great day. Another robbery. Did they lose much? Enough. How much did you lose, Hazel? What do you mean? Didn't you leave a cash box yesterday to be put into that safe? Oh, yes. So that's what you meant when you were saying you brought bad news. That's right. How much was in the cash box? Oh, a couple of hundred, I reckon. The loss won't break me. <laughs> did you find any clues that might lead to the crocs? No, not yet. Too bad. That gang must be smart to cover up like they do. Gang, Hazel? Well, whoever it is. Oh, 
I'd like to look over the room where Hank Collins was murdered, if you don't mind. Sure. I'll take you up there. Come on. Come with us, King. <laughs> it's right up these stairs. Nobody will rent that room since it happened. I reckon you heard about how it was locked up from the inside. I told the sergeant about that. This is the room, Sergeant. Sergeant Preston examined the room closely. While Hazel and the constable stood watching, he checked the window latch and the bolt on the door. He opened a door and a side wall and found an empty closet. And then, as he was about to turn away, he heard a low, muffled cough. Preston watched sharply as the great dog, Yukon King, sniffed along the base of the wooden partition that formed the back wall of the closet. Preston turned and spoke. Come on, King. There's nothing in the closet to help us. It's sure a mystery how anybody got in and out of here, leaving both windows locked and the door bolted. I had the bolt on the door thick since they had to break into the room. Oh. I bet he's having a good laugh about how he fooled everybody. Who? Uh, the killer, of course. Oh. I see this is a corner room. I'd like to see the room next to this one, the room beyond that closet. Oh, sure, sure. Come on. Mr. Myers isn't in, but I have a master key so as we can get in. Huh. He doesn't seem to work so well, but I'll get it in a minute. Who's Miles? Dirk Miles is a newcomer here in Selkirk, Sergeant. He's been here about three months. He's a carpenter, locksmith, general handyman around town. I see. Yeah, it's unlocked now. Huh. That door over there opens into a closet, doesn't it? Uh, yes. Must back up to the closet in Hank Collins' room. That's right. I'll look inside. He has a few clothes hanging on the hooks in there. So I see. I should think it would be handier to have hooks in the back wall of the closet instead of off to each side. Any reason why hooks weren't put there? No, Sergeant, just happened that way. I noticed the other side of this petition was clear of hooks, too. <laughs> you sure notice everything, Sergeant. Part of my business, Hazel. Seems solid enough. Oh, it's solid, all right. Say, Sergeant, come on down and I'll fix some coffee if you'd like some. We've seen enough here, but don't bother with coffee. Thanks, we haven't time. And thanks for showing us the rooms. Let's go, Jack. Come along, King. <laughs> As they walked along the street after leaving the boarding house, Preston was saying, Jack, I think we're going to solve that murder along with the robberies. But we'll have to move carefully. Gosh, what makes you think you can solve it? I was beginning to think it was a perfect crime. Too perfect, Jack. If one of the windows had been unlatched, I'd have been more puzzled. But people can't walk through walls, Sergeant. That depends on the wall. I'm convinced Hazel knows a great deal about what's happened. Why do you say that? She seemed to forget about that cash box, for one thing, and then said there were only a couple of hundred dollars in it. She's had that much in the house before. Why should she want to put it in a safe place, like the safe in the mining office? Say, come to think of it, she did act sort of indifferent. Yes, and she lied about the rumor Miles being out. I heard a man cough on the other side of that petition. He must have been listening there. But the room was empty. I know. Hazel stalled as she unlocked the door. Frankly, I suspect someone was in that room, and she stalled long enough to give him a chance to go into the other room. <laughs> but how could he? I looked the two closets over closely, Jack. I'm almost sure the petition between them opens. It's the only possible way anyone could have gone in Collins' room while the doors and windows were locked on the inside. Well, then we'd better pick up Hazel and that man, Miles, for questioning. No, not yet. But I do think Hazel knows too much. We want to get everyone involved, Jack, and we'll have to be sure... If we tip them off, if we're suspicious, it would spoil things. We'll head to the office and make some plans. <laughs> After the two Mounties left the house, Dirk Miles was talking to Hazel. I don't like the way that big Mountie, the sergeant, was asking questions and snooping, Hazel. You have reason not to like it, Dirk. I'm sure he suspects something by the way he was looking into those closets. What are we going to do? There's only one thing to do. Remember, you've got a murder rap hanging over your head, Dirk. Yeah, I know that. Then you've got to finish off Sergeant Preston. Hey, are you loco? He's always got that dog with him. And if I tried to ambush him, he's liable to turn the tables and give me the bullet. Leave it to me, Dirk. Six months ago, Preston was in town with a couple other Mounties. The constable couldn't put him up, so Preston and one of the others stayed here at my place. What's that got to do with me? Just this. I'll get Preston to move into Hank Collins' room tonight. His dog will stay down in the kitchen where he stayed last time. Then, while the Mountie's asleep, you go in and knife him. 
beat it out to the shack and stay there. Well, the constable sweats over another mystery murder. <laughs> well, I'll go hunt up Preston and persuade him to take that room. Later, Sergeant Preston and the constable were discussing the situation. Jack, my idea is to keep a constant watch on Hazel and Dirk Miles. Also, I'd like a chance to get into Hank's room without Hazel's knowledge so I can test my theory about those closets. I'll point out Miles to you as soon as I get the chance. I don't know how you can work it to... Sergeant! Sergeant, after you left, I got to thinking. Oh, about what? You enjoyed staying at my place once, remember? It was that time when you and another Mountie needed a room. Yes, I remember. Well, I like to keep my house filled, and, and I need the income from that room Hank Collins had. It's one of my best. It'd be a great favor to me if you'd stay in it while you're in town, rent-free. Just to show folks there's nothing to worry about. Oh, but Sergeant Preston has a bunk over at my cabin. There's no reason for him Frankly, to... Jack, the accommodations at the boarding house are much better than you provide. If you don't mind, I think I'll do as Hazel suggests. After all, it will help her rent the room later. All right, Sergeant, just as you say. Fine, fine. You bring King along and he'll have that nice place in the kitchen he had before, Sergeant. All right, I'll move in after supper tonight, Hazel. I'll look forward to a good night's rest and a fine soft bed, and I think King likes sleeping in your kitchen, didn't you, boy? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll have the room ready for you then. Now I have to do a little shopping. See you tonight. So long. Bye. Bye. Holy smoke, Sergeant. You might end up a corpse if you sleep in that room tonight. Don't worry, Jack. This is the break we've been looking for. Now listen. After I move in the boarding house, this is what I want you to do. That night, Sergeant Preston went to the boarding house. Seeing that King was comfortable in the kitchen, the sergeant went to his room and locked the door. After making certain preparations, he put out the light. The shutters were closed, and the room was in complete darkness. About an hour later, Dirk Miles, waiting in the closet of his room, heard muffled snores. Yeah, the Mounties are asleep. Now's my chance. Dirk reached out and grasped a small handle screwed to the back partition near one corner and hidden by his coat which hung from one of the side hooks. He tugged a moment and then the wooden partition slid back. Slowly, Dirk entered the other closet and opened the door into Preston's room. Moving slowly in the darkness toward the bed, Dirk could barely make out the outline of a figure under the covers. He paused a moment, and then he raised his arm high, and the steel blade of a knife plunged downward and thudded into the covers. <laughs> Dirk waited. He heard a low groan and then complete silence. Quickly, he entered the closet and closed the sliding partition behind him. A moment later, the figure of Sergeant Preston arose from behind the bed. He struck a match and stood looking down at the vicious knife sticking into the roll of blankets under the bed covers. Uh, I was right about the petition in those closets. Now I'll get to the door and be ready to follow him when he leaves the other room. Sergeant Preston waited just inside the door to Collins' room until he was sure the killer was on the way downstairs. Then he quietly opened the door and, moving quickly, peered over the banister at the fleeing figure. He recognized Miles in the description the constable had given him. A moment later, he heard the front door close. Now I'll get King so we can follow that man. The constable, who was waiting near the woodshed behind the house, saw Miles come out and ride away. A moment later, he saw Sergeant Preston running toward him with King. It happened just as I thought it would, Jack. I followed that man downstairs and watched him right away, just now. That was Dirk Miles. I was sure of that. Where are the horses? Behind the shed. A logical thing will be for him to report my death to the gang. We'll follow him. Let's go. Come along, King. <laughs> Easy, Blackie. Stay, Stay boy. Stay. <laughs> Miles is far enough away now, so it's safe to follow. Let's go. Come on, King. Get up, Blackie. Get up. Get up. <laughs> Later that night, Dirk reached the trapper shack. Oh, oh. Rocky and the other three were waiting as Dirk entered. How'd you make out, Dirk? How do you think? <laughs> that Mountie's in Hank Collins' room with a knife stuck in it. Good. 
The body is locked in that room, and I fix a petition from on my side so that it won't slide anymore. That's in case Preston mentioned something to the constable about being suspicious. Yeah, that was smart. Sure was. Hayes is going to ride out here later as soon as she gets rid of Mr. Drake. He came over to talk about the robbery with her. <laughs> Fool's eye, Pop, if he caught sight of that tin cash box sitting there. The <laughs> table. Reach on it! Huh? Constable, what's the idea? He must have trailed Dirk out here. I did. He's wanted for murder. The rest of you are involved. What? Holy smoke, they must have found Preston already. He's not taking me. He hasn't got no proof of anything. We'll get the proof, don't worry. I said you're not taking me. Oh! Someone's with him. That shot came through the window. I fired that shot. Hey, Sergeant what? Preston, Dirk, you said you he got him. He can't be alive. He can't. So you were the one who tried to oh. knife me, eh? If you weren't wounded, I'd wring oh. your neck. Look at the table, Sergeant. A tin cash box oh. in the express sack. Yes, and the rest of the loot. Get the guns, Jack. All right. Let their guns alone what? and don't let you turn what around. Oh, Hazel came to the party, too. I don't know how you got here, Sergeant, but I don't believe in ghosts, so Dirk must have slipped up. But this time, you will be a corpse along with the constable. Now, drop your gun. Ping! Oh, oh, oh. Help! Get him away! I'll, I'll fix you, Marty. Quiet! Hold it, the rest of you. I'm king. Down, fella. Hazel dropped a gun, Jack. I think we have them all under control. I'll get the other guns. Are you having anything on us? There's plenty on all of you, including Hank Collins' murder. That sliding partition was clever, but it was the only possible way anyone could manage to get out of that locked room. That must be the tin cash box she left at the mining office to put into the safe. Yes. I'd say she asked Drake to take care of it so she could watch and get the combination. Smart, aren't you? You're not. We're arresting all of you in the name of the Crown for robbery and murder. Dirk Miles did the killing. You can't bring that charge against me. She planned everything. What? Including my death, eh? That's right, she Shut did. Shut up, you fools. You see, Constable, they can't wait to put the noose around each other's necks. We'll take the stolen loot and get these crooks back to town. Hazel Mears' gang is finished, and this case is closed. In our next adventure... Okay. The sergeant could hear the Indian drums as he stopped his team in front of the trading post. The factor greeted him with a question. Sergeant, what did the chief's son do that made you kill him? I don't know what you're talking about. The chief's son wasn't killed? Well, the Indians say you kill him. You and a man in a white coat. That was Dr. Warren. The boy had appendicitis. The doctor operated, but it was too late to save him. A natural death. Eh? Of course. Well, you'll never be able to convince the Indians of that. I warn you, keep away from their village. But the sergeant must go to the Indian village, for a desperate outlaw is hiding there. And not only the criminal's guns, but the rifles of the whole tribe will be turned against him. Don't miss this next exciting adventure. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Enterprises, directed by Fred Flowerday, and supervised by Charles D. Livingston. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. The challenge of the Yukon is brought to you every Saturday and Sunday. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye and good luck until our next adventure. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.